to NTD China News. I'm Karen Chang. Making headlines this Tuesday, December 11th. Who's the latest official to fall from leaked photos? Mo Yin receives his Nobel Prize, but did he deserve it? A leading religious freedom advocate voices support for this petition. Another Chinese official has been sacked over a sex scandal. Chi Fang, the police chief of Wusu City in Xinjiang province, was dismissed on Saturday, Stateuan Xinhua News Agency reported on Monday. Chi is accused of giving police jobs to two mistresses, believed to be twin sisters. The scandal emerged last week with a photo of the scantily clad woman in bed with Chi Fang. Chi is also accused of renting a luxury apartment in the city's high-end area for the sisters and that the police bureau paid for the rent. One of the women was made vice captain of special operations, while the other was named an assistant police officer in the traffic department. Neither was known to have any prior experience. Several misbehaving Chinese officials have been exposed online in recent weeks. Chinese netizens have used the internet as a way to publicize and embarrass corrupt officials. The Chinese regime, in a bid to improve its image, has sometimes responded by sacking the named officials. Last week, we told you about a petition that's asking the U.S. government to condemn and investigate claims that the Chinese government is killing prisoners of conscience for their organs. On Monday, a leading religious freedom advocate applauded the effort for letting more people become aware of the issue. Forced organ harvesting in China. Some have called it a crime against humanity, others have never heard about it. But this month, a trio of U.S. doctors want at least 25,000 Americans to help get the U.S. government to speak out. Now a leading religious freedom advocate is adding her support. This is a shame on the conscience of any nation. Any nation that permits this to take place, organ harvesting, you know, it, it shocks the conscience. It literally shocks the conscience. On December 2nd, three U.S. doctors, including renowned bioethics scholar Arthur Kaplan, launched this petition. It was submitted under President Obama's We the People initiative, which helps the Americans exercise their rights to petition. The campaign highlights allegations that the Chinese regime has been killing prisoners of conscience, primarily Falun Gong believers, for their organs. The issue was first raised in 2006 but has been largely omitted by the international media. Katrina Sweat, daughter of the late Congressman Tom Lantos, an avid human rights advocate, says the petition is incredibly important. This is incredibly important because this is the sort of story that once it reaches a critical mass with the public, once people really become aware of this, it's so horrifying, it's so despicable, it so appalls people, but it's really not known yet. And so I think this petition is an excellent idea. There have been unconfirmed reports that the Chinese official Wang Li Jin gave U.S. authorities information about forced organ harvesting when he fled to a U.S. consulate in February. In October, 106 Congress members wrote a dear colleague's letter to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton urging the State Department to release any information it may have on the matter. This latest campaign is calling on the U.S. government to investigate and condemn the organ harvesting claims if it receives 25,000 signatures before January 1, 2013, the White House is required to make an official response. NTD News, Washington, D.C. Chinese writer Mo Yan received his Nobel Prize in Literature on Monday. The award has received controversy and a Chinese democracy advocate living in Taiwan says Mo didn't deserve the prize. On Monday, International Human Rights Day, Chinese dissident Wang Dan called on the Chinese regime to release Liu Xiaobo, winner of the Nobel Peace Prize in 2010. Wang also said Chinese writer Mo Yan, who won the Nobel Literature Prize in October, was not qualified to win. Wang hosted a news conference in Taipei commemorating Liu and other arrested Chinese writers and dissidents on the day the 2012 Nobel Peace Prize was awarded in Oslo. So I appeal first to Xi Jinping. If you want to prove to China and the world that you're determined to go up against corruption, then you should release Lu Jinbao and set his wife Lu Jin free. Then we could give you basic trust. If not, then I think your anti-corruption stance is fake. Wang Dan and Liu Xiaobo were both involved in the 1989 pro-democracy movement, which was crushed by the Chinese army on June 4, 1989. Liu has been in prison since 2009 and his wife has been under house arrest since he was awarded the Peace Prize. 
Literature Prize winner Mo Yan is known for his books such as Red Sorghum and The Republic of Wine. Wang was asked to comment on Mo's win and said Mo was not qualified for the prize. I think Mo Yan's speech in Stockholm is very disappointing, even infuriating because he spoke of China's censorship in speeches. Although he said he did not agree, his attitude showed that he appeared to be agreeing. Everyone saw it. He cannot deny it. The Nobel Literature Prize doesn't always award accomplished in literature. The spirit of the Nobel Literature Prize is also about how literature influences society. From this perspective, I don't think Ma Yen is qualified. Mo told a press conference in October he hoped Liu Xiaobo could be free as soon as possible. But since then he has declined to talk about the issue. Mo also refused to sign a petition by fellow laureates demanding Liu's freedom. Other writers and dissidents have criticized Mo Yan for commemorating a speech by former communist leader Mao Zedong. Mo, who is a Communist Party member, has defended censorship as sometimes necessary, calling it similar to security checks at airports. A court in Xinjiang has today sentenced three Uyghur men to death following claims in June they had attempted to hijack a plane. Another man was sentenced to life in prison. The verdict came with little other detail, but this spokesman for the World Uyghur Congress told the UK's Guardian newspaper it was an unfair trial. He said the men were given state-appointed lawyers who did not defend them properly. Six men were arrested back in June following the hijacking report. Two of them died shortly in hospital, apparently from injuries sustained while on the plane. The circumstances surrounding the plane violence are murky. Uyghur advocates say it was actually a dispute over seating, not a hijacking attempt. Muslim Uyghurs who live in the western Xinjiang region are often portrayed by Chinese authorities as extremists or terrorists. Like Tibetans, Uyghurs are a minority group within China and have protested against oppressive Chinese rule. And coming up after the break, what's the future for Chinese firms after the SEC's legal case? China's wealth gap divide grows to an alarming level, and making a splash isn't just for hot summer days. And welcome back. Security regulators in the U.S. have been locked in an impasse with China, where accounting firms there have refused to turn over documents needed for accounting investigations. What's next for China's firms trading in the U.S.? One analyst weighs in. Last Monday, December 3rd, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission charged the Chinese branches of five top U.S. audit firms. The move comes after unsuccessful attempts by the SEC to get documents from China that may contain evidence of fraudulent accounting. NTD's in-house financial analyst Warren Song says the lawsuits serve as a warning to those wanting to invest in Chinese firms. It's common knowledge that China's stock market is a mechanism for laundering money. The legal system in the country isn't strict, and there are a lot of shady things on the accounting books of the companies. So don't invest blindly. The SEC has been trying to access the audit books of nine Chinese firms publicly trading in the U.S. The Chinese affiliates of U.S. accounting firms, including KPMG and Ernst & Young, have refused. They say they risk violating China's secrecy laws if they were to hand over the documents. The SEC says it needs to assess the firm's accounting books in order to protect investors' interests. Sun says a legal impasse could lead to a massive delisting of Chinese firms in the U.S. Investors will be scared to purchase shares. There's too much uncertainty and risk. If no one invests in these firms, they'll have no choice but to pull out of the U.S. market. Around 400 Chinese companies trade in the U.S. market. According to Bloomberg, around 160 of these are listed through reverse mergers. That is purchasing a shell company that's already listed. This avoids the public scrutiny that usually comes with listing. The SEC has previously deregistered Chinese companies trading in the U.S. that failed to produce documents for its fraud investigation. The gap between the rich and poor is rising in China, and now new figures released by a research center shows the wealth gap is reaching an alarming level. The gap between the rich and poor is growing at an alarming rate in China. Economists represent income inequality with the Gini coefficient where any number over 0.4 is a significant cause for concern. 
According to the Survey and Research Centre for China Household Finance, in 2010 China's Gini coefficient was 0.61. Professor Frank Tianxia at the Aiken Business School, University of South Carolina, says the coefficient could be much worse than the published figure. In the past year or two, the gap between rich and poor has increased. People's discontentment keeps growing. Corruption in the CCP and seizure of wealth by force is becoming more and more rampant. Therefore, it is no surprise that China's Gini coefficient is getting close to 0.7. An example of this inequality can be seen in the average annual income of Communist Party officials, which is 15 to 38 times higher than ordinary workers. The annual income of state personnel at the lowest level is 6 to 12 times that of ordinary local workers. This income data also does not include paid vacations, free goods and other benefits to state employees' families. Social riots usually take place when the rich and the poor are polarised. Other social injustices also cause great discontent. I totally believe in the prediction of China's Gini coefficient. Actually, we all know that the polarisation between the rich and poor is very severe in China. Over the past few years, social unrest in China has been increasing along with the Gini coefficient. Tsinghua University professor Sun Liping says the number of riots in 2010 was 180,000, twice as many as in 2006. The Gini coefficient is not the only indicator of the coming collapse of the CCP regime. It is also indicated by political, social and other indices. During last month's Communist Party Congress, leaders in Beijing addressed the widening gap. New Party head Xi Jinping said that corruption could endanger authorities' rule over the mainland. Apple's iPhone 5 is the latest heartthrob of smartphone users with its new features and high-performing capabilities. Apple will start selling the device in China this week, and already sell forecasts are looking good. Chinese consumers are eagerly awaiting the iPhone 5. Demand for the smartphone has been very high, with around 300,000 online orders already placed with China Unicom. Apple will start selling the phone in China this Friday. According to China Unicom, most of the orders are coming from Beijing. Orders from Guangdong, Shandong and Shanghai have also been high. Statistics of orders shared by China Unicom on its blog indicate 74% of orders were placed by male consumers. 52% of the orders are from people aged between 20 and 30 years old, and about 85% of them are choosing to buy the 16 gigabyte model. Back in January, when China Unicom was accepting pre-orders for the iPhone 4S, the carrier's website could not handle the large amount of traffic and stopped taking orders. Analysts predict iPhone 5 sales will outnumber previous iPhone models. While most of us enjoy sitting around the fire in the cold winter months, some people like to be outside in the wet and the cold. These polar bear swimmers took the plunge, jumping into icy cold water in nothing but swimsuits. Winter swimmers are braving freezing temperatures to go swimming in the city of Hulunbir in China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. Temperatures often plummet to minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, but it doesn't stop these men getting in their swimsuits and playing outside. On Monday, it was minus 4 degrees. These men may not have gotten points for their diving, but they did get points for bravery. Cold weather is a natural thing, and we should enjoy the cold and the happiness brought to us by nature. This hardy group says they don't find the water too cold and even have swum in colder temperatures. One of these swimming enthusiasts, Yan Xiangping, previously set the Guinness World Record by staying in freezing water for 67 minutes. Not just for locals, burly men come from all over China to test their endurance in the cold water. We feel it's colder here than in our hometown, so we wanted to have a try. Many of them swim daily in winter, claiming it gives them strong bodies and strong minds. Swimming makes me healthier and happier. And in case the cold water wasn't cold enough, they also made a point to roll in the snow. <laughs> and that's all for this broadcast of NTD China News. For more on China-related topics, visit our website at ntd.tv. Coming up next, we have China Focus, where Shelley Zhang looks at the implications of the sale of Canada's Nexon to a Chinese state-owned company.